Hello, and welcome to part two. Our next step in the derivation is to collate all the microstates that belong to a particular term symbol. We do this by glancing at our chart, and we look for the largest rectangular region where there is at least one microstate, a tick mark, in each of the little boxes. One such rectangle is highlighted in indigo in the chart. The single microstate that belongs to this term symbol in each box is also highlighted in indigo. The box goes from m sub l equals minus 3 to m sub l equals plus 3. So this tells us that the overall big L that corresponds to those particular states is L equals 3. Similarly, we see that big M sub s goes from minus 3 halves to plus 3 halves. That tells us that the spin big S is equal to 3 halves. The symbol that we use for L being equal to 3 is the big letter F. So that's the reason for the F in the term symbol. And upper left superscript, we put the spin multiplicity. The spin multiplicity isn't the spin exactly, it's the expression 2s plus 1, where s is the total spin. Since the total spin s is equal to 3 halves, 2 times 3 halves plus 1 is equal to 4. This generates the term symbol little 4f, which is read as quartet f. Therefore, all those microstates combine and are interpreted as the single term symbol quartet F. Our next step would be now to erase each and every one of the microstates that is highlighted in indigo, and then we'll continue the process with the resulting chart. After removing the indigo colored microstates belonging to the previous term symbol, we again look for the largest rectangular region where each of the little boxes contains at least one microstate. One such region is highlighted in orange. Notice that the m sub s values run from minus one half to plus one half. That tells us that big S spin is equal to one half. The big m sub l values run from minus five to plus five, which tells us that the big L value is equal to 5. The letter that corresponds to a big L equal to 5 is a capital H. Since the spin is 1 half, the spin multiplicity is 2 times that plus 1, which is equal to 2. That gives us a term symbol of a doublet H. After removing the orange colored tick microstates, we are left with the following table. Again, we look for the largest region where each of the boxes has a, at least one microstate, and we have another such region colored in green, and the uh, relevant microstates are highlighted in green as well. Notice that this box runs from big M sub s equals minus a half to big M sub s equals plus half, which tells us that the big S spin is equal to a half. The M sub L values run from minus four to plus four, which tells us that the big L value is equal to four. The letter that goes with L equals four is capital G. And since the spin is one half, the spin multiplicity is two times a half plus one, which is equal to two. That gives us a term symbol of a doublet G for these particular microstates. Continuing, we look for the largest rectangular region where there is at least one microstate in each box, and we have one in the brown box. Uh, the relevant microstate is highlighted in brown as well. We notice that this box runs from big M sub s equals minus a half to big M sub s equals plus half which tells us that the spin, big S, is equal to 1 half. The big M sub L values run from minus 3 to plus 3, which tells us that the angular momentum L is equal to 3. The relevant symbol 
for big L being equal to 3 is a big F, so that gives us an F term. Since the total spin S is equal to 1 half, and the spin multiplicity is 2S plus 1, 2 times a half plus 1 is equal to 2, which gives us a doublet F term corresponding to this particular collection of microstates colored in brown. Next, after removing all the brown colored microstate ticks, we again look for the largest rectangular region where we have at least one tick mark in each box. And we see one in the purple region. And the microstates corresponding to this collection of microstates are each colored purple. We notice that this box runs from big M sub S equals minus a half to big M sub S equal to plus half, one half, which tells us that the total spin S is equal to one half. Big M sub L goes from minus two to plus two, which tells us that the orbital angular momentum big L is equal to two. When we have big L equal to two, the symbol that goes with that is a capital D. The spin multiplicity is two times a half plus one, which gives us a term of doublet D. The next rectangular region of interest is colored in lime green. It goes from big M sub S equals minus three halves to big M sub S equals three halves, which tells us that the spin big S is equal to three halves. The big M sub L values run from minus one through zero to plus one, which tells us the value of big L is equal to one. When big L is equal to one, the relevant term symbol is a capital P. As far as the spin, since the spin is three halves, that gives us a spin multiplicity of two times three halves plus one, which is equal to four. Therefore, we have a quartet P symbol. After removing the lime green colored microstates, we again look for a rectangular region in our chart. And in this case, it is highlighted in dark red and one microstate in each of the little boxes is also colored dark red. This rectangular region runs from big M sub S equals minus a half to big M sub S equals plus half, which tells us that big S is equal to one half. The big M sub L values run from minus two to zero to plus two, which tells us that the overall angular momentum big L is equal to two. When we have such a state, we use the symbol of a capital D to imply that big L is equal to two. Since the spin S is equal to one half, the spin multiplicity is two times one half plus one, which is equal to two, thereby giving us another doublet D term. Now we are left with only one rectangular region, which is surrounded in light blue consisting of six microstates. This particular rectangular region runs from big M sub S equals minus a half to big M sub S equals plus half, which tells us that S is equal to one half. The big M sub L values run from minus one to one, which tells us that big L is equal to one. The corresponding symbol for L is equal to one is a capital P. The spin multiplicity is two times a half plus one, which is equal to two, which is gives us our last symbol, which is doublet P. Now we have derived all the spectroscopic term symbols for D3. Notice that we have two different quartet states. We have a quartet F, and we have a quartet P. We have a number of doublet states. We have doublet H, doublet G, doublet F, 
we actually have two doublet D's and a doublet P. So now what we are looking for is the ground state. And recall that by Hunt's first rule that the low energy state, the ground state, will have the maximum spin. So a quartet state has a spin of three halves, whereas a doublet state has a spin of one half. So that tells us by Hunt's first rule that the ground state must come from one of these two terms because they're the only two quartet terms that we have. Now to apply Hunt's second rule, we want to maximize the angular momentum. And we notice that for the um, P state, that is L is equal to one. For the F state, we have that um, L is equal to three. So since three is greater than one, that tells us that the quartet F is our ground state. The last bit of work that we have to do is to determine the J levels within this quartet F term. So recall that J runs from the absolute value of L minus S up by integers to the absolute value of L plus S. So in this particular case, it's helpful to recall that L is equal to 3, which we can rewrite as 6 halves, and that S is equal to 3 halves. So effectively, all we have to do is determine the value of L minus S, absolute value, the value of the absolute value of L plus S, the two lowest and highest terms, and then we can merely fill in the intermediate terms proceeding by integers. I'm going to show how to do that. So let's first find L minus S. So L minus S is 6 halves minus 3 halves. And this is equal to 3 halves. So this will be our lowest J value state. If we then do L plus S, we get the absolute value of 6 halves plus 3 halves, which is equal to 9 halves. This tells us that the values of J will proceed from 3 halves up to 9 halves by integers. So let's write that down explicitly. So it tells us that we have a quartet F with a J states of three halves or five halves or seven halves or nine halves. This is to show the various possibilities for J within that particular term symbol. And then last but not least, we want to determine which of these is the actual overall ground state for the D3 ion we have here. At this point, we have to use Hunt's third rule. And Hunt's third rule is slightly different than the first two. In Hunt's first rule, we are told to look for maximum spin for the ground state. In Hunt's second rule, we look for the maximum angular momentum for the ground state. In Hunt's third rule, so long as we have uh, an orbital that's less than half full, we want to look for the lowest value of J. So we go for max spin, max angular momentum, but then the minimum J, so long as we're less than half full. So in this case, since we are less than half full, we only have three out of a possible of 10 uh, electrons in the D shell. That tells us we want to look for the minimum value of J, which in this case is three halves. So this tells us, after much work, that the overall ground state for this D3 configuration is actually a quartet F three halves. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.